Hello everybody, I'm Simon Preston and welcome back to Reggae Boys Commentary. Yes, this is the platform where we come together to discuss everything in relation to Jamaican football. This is your hub for everything Jamaican football related. What a summer it has been. Amazing, isn't it? And guess what? It's not over yet because we still have some national teams that will be involved in a couple of weeks from now. But I figured, let's do a recap of summer 2023. What are the strides? What are the periods of growth? What are the progress moments that we made across all competitions? Well, let's have a look, shall we? Because that is exactly what we're going to zero in on in this video in particular. So if you haven't already, I kindly ask you to hit the like button. And after you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button to Reggae Boys Commentary. We have surpassed 18,000 subscribers and are pushing on to even further as well to push to 19 and by the end of the year, 20,000 subscribers. Okay, guys, you guys know Reggae Boys Commentary, accuracy, reliability, credibility, and positivity. Positivity. All right, so let's get right into the matter, shall we? So let's talk about the when the summer started in particular. And we had our under 20 reggae girls that were sent to stage. Remember we, that they were in the preliminaries against the likes of Anguilla and also against Bermuda. They advanced and Honduras and they advanced to the final round, which is the CONCACAF Women's Under 20 Championship. Well, what happened there? Well, our under 20 reggae girls recorded a victory against Panama. Why was this victory so significant? Well, this was the first time that Jamaica defeated a Central American team at a CONCACAF Women's Under-20 Championship since 2020. Yep, that is right, as Jamaica recorded a 4-1 victory over Panama. And that was a stride made by our Under-20 reggae girls. Also, in the summer this year, we participated at the CAC Games, men and women. And another piece of history was created. We produced the youngest Jamaican scorer at the CAC Games, and that was Chanel Buckley, 18 years old, in a 1-1 draw against Puerto Rico. Yep, that is right. So, that's two events and two strides that were performed, that were made in that moment. Let's now go to the senior reggae boys. Yep, that is right, the senior reggae boys. A semi-final run at the 2023 edition of the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Well, you better get out your pen and paper because there's so much to make mention about. First time that Jamaica are advancing to the semi-finals of the CONCACAF Gold Cup since 2019. Jamaica, we secured our biggest victory in the history of the Gold Cup, a 5-0 victory over St. Kitts and Nevis at the Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. Jamaica's previous biggest victory in Gold Cup history, a 4-0 victory over Grenada. First time Jamaica is defeating Guatemala in 11 years. The last time was 2012 at the National Stadium, a 2-1 victory, where we had Ryan Johnson and DeMar Phillips on the score sheet. First time defeating Trinidad and Tobago in seven years. Yep, the last time, well, you know when that moment was in particular as well, you know, defeating Trinidad and Tobago in 2016, 2017, thereabouts as well. Yep, 2017. Time flies, doesn't it? It really does. Six years ago, Trinidad and Tobago, Queen's Park, well, Paisley Crawford Stadium, fantastic, fantastic. And of course, our very own Damari Gray, named in the team of the tournament for the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Now, we head over to, that's right, the Reggae Girls. The Reggae Girls. So, where do we start? The first game against France, first time that Jamaica was picking up a point at the FIFA Women's World Cup. And not only that as well, it was also the first time that Jamaica were registering a point in any World Cup since 2011, when our under 17 team drew 1-1 against, you guessed it, France. Andre Eli Lewis scored in that game in particular. And also Jamaica's first clean sheet at a World Cup since 2001, when Ali and Whitaker kept a clean sheet in a nil-nil draw against Egypt. That's right. Where do we progress from there? The Panama game. Jamaica's first win at a World Cup since France 98. Yep. And Jamaica's first goal at a World Cup since... <laughs> since Andre Eli Lewis's goal in, in, 20, in... Since Havana Salone's goal against uh, Australia four years ago. So Alison Swaby, the second reggae girl to score at the World Cup. Alison Swaby, also the first defender to score for Jamaica at the World Cup since... 
Zelana Barnes against Argentina, which came in 2011 as well. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And a nil-nil draw against Brazil. Three clean sheets in the group stages. Rebecca Spencer, three clean sheets. More clean sheets than any other goalkeeper that has represented Jamaica at the World Cup. Jamaica, the first Caribbean team in 85 years to play in a round of 16 match at the World Cup. And based on the statistics, Jamaica finished 13th out of 32 teams at the World Cup. So check out the FIFA ranking at the end of this month because it's going to have Jamaica in a very, very, very good light. All right, so lots of things to make note about from the reggae girl standpoint. So much spin-offs. Tiffany Cameron as well, being the first reggae girl to play at three World Cups. Now we're going to go to our under-15 reggae boys. All right, so let's start with the win against El Salvador. That was the first time that Jamaica were winning a game at the CONCACAF Under-15 Boys Championship since 2013. The victory over Saudi Arabia, Jamaica's first victory against an Asian team at the under-15 level. And guess what? Jamaica also booked their passage to the quarterfinals. The first time that Jamaica booked a passage to the quarterfinals of the CONCACAF Boys Under-15 Championship. Jamaica 4, Honduras 1. First time that Jamaica booked passage to the semifinals. And also the first time that Jamaica were beating two Central American teams at the CONCACAF Boys Under-15 Championship. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And Jamaica finishing fourth in the CONCACAF Boys Under-15 Championship. Jamaica's highest ever finish. So let's recap the summer, shall we? A semi-final run at the Gold Cup, a semi-final run at the CONCACAF Boys Under-15 Championship, our senior reggae girls heading to the round of 16 of the World Cup, our under-20 reggae girls picking up a first win over a Central American team in three years, and at CAC Games, producing one of the youngest scorers in the history of the competition. Isn't that great? Isn't that fantastic? And guess what? We have the under-17 regular girls at Sabina Park at the end of this month. Yep, they're going to play Grenada, and also, they're also going to play Panama. So a lot more to look out for as well. Lots more of our national teams to be involved. And we know September, what lies ahead, the Nations League, we have the Olympic qualifier as well. So lots of more football to be played as well. Every FIFA window, there's going to be constant activity to get behind our national teams. So a perfect opportunity for us to do that. Getting to Sabina Park for our under-17 girls. Getting to the National Stadium for our senior girls and senior boys. And we do the same in October as well. And November. And heading into next year when there's so much more events. Alright. You all did a fantastic job from your television sets cheering on their national teams. Now that they're on home soil coming up. Use the opportunity to put on your black, green and gold. And cheer on the national team. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys haven't already, please hit the like button. And after you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button to Reggae Boys Commentary for more content. Okay, guys, be safe.